So when you're testing the compression on your engine using one of these, does it really matter if you're holding the throttle wide open or not? Well, today we're going to do a little bit of myth busting, UJC style, and we're going to test it to find out. So this is an argument that's probably been going on ever since the very first compression gauge was ever made and used, and will probably continue on until there's no more internal combustion engines left on the face of the earth. And no matter what we come up with today, no matter what our results are, it's not going to stop the arguments, because people are always going to say, we missed a variable. Or it's different between a carbureted car and a fuel injection car, or number of cylinders matter, or whatever. People come up with all kinds of theories and reasons, and some legitimate, some not. And that is just fine. And if you want to fill up the comment sections with your arguments, go right ahead. Have that lively discussion. Disagree with me, agree with me, tell me I did it wrong. I don't care. Just be respectful of both me and everybody else commenting. Since we are a channel, dealing with classic British cars, and the venerable MGB is probably, if not the most common, definitely one of the most common classic British cars, at least in the US, that's what we're gonna be testing today. Now, we have this nice rubber bumper B sitting here, but we also have two more rubber bumper Bs that we're also going to be testing because to add to it, all three cars have different carburation setups on them, so we can test whether that makes a difference as well. So all three are rubber bumper Bs, which means they'll all have eight to one motors, and we believe that all three of them are unrebuilt original engines. This one is a 1976, shows 70,000 miles on it, and it still has the Stromberg single carb on it. This one is a 74 and a half showing 42,000 miles on it, believed to be unrebuilt, and has twin SUs on it. This one is a 79B with, we believe, 120,000 miles. It's showing 19. It's a parts car we just recently brought home, and we believe it to be unrebuilt, and it has a Weber DGV on it. So once we're done testing all three of the rubber bumper cars, what I'm going to do is bring in my chrome bumper GT, which is about a 9.6 to one engine, just to find out how much difference it's gonna make between a low compression engine and a much higher compression engine. So the basic parameters of the test is we got a fully charged jump pack here that we're going to put on top of the batteries of each one of them so that we know we're maintaining cranking speed and it's not dropping off any. And also to maintain the cranking speed, we're going to take all, all four plugs out and test one cylinder at a time and crank them all the same number of times. So before we jump into the actual testing, what I'm going to say is for my purposes, when I am testing compression, I'm doing it just so I can get a general idea of the condition of the engine and how well I can tune it. So I don't worry about whether the throttle is open or not. As I have found on the few cars that I have actually done in the past, that it didn't make a big enough difference in the numbers for me to change the way I'm thinking about it. What we're really just looking at is is the compression high end or low end, and how even across the board is it? Because that tells me how I can tune it, how well I can tune it. Because if the compression numbers across the board are varying by quite a bit, you know, say 15% or more, then I'm never going to get it to run super smooth. But if it's really good compression spread, you know, just a few pounds across the board, then I know, regardless of whether it's low compression or high compression, I can at least get it to run smoothly. Just if it's really low, like say 105, 110 pounds, it's not burning all that efficiently. 
And if it's not getting an efficient burn, it's not going to burn all the fuel that's getting in the cylinders, and it's going to smell rich all the time, even if the lifting pin check shows it being lean. But if the compression numbers are really good, like say 150 pounds or higher, then not only am I going to get it to run smoothly, but also it shouldn't smell rich. So it gives me an idea of what to expect. Also, if you're using the plug collar in your tuning, you have to know, first of all, that with the B-Series engine, there is going to be a difference between the plug collar, between the two center plugs and the two outer plugs on an engine that's running like it should because of the cylinder robbing with the Siamese ports. The center two cylinders tend to rob some of the charge from the front and rear cylinders, so those will always tend to look a little richer, and, or run richer, than the front cylinders, or, and the rear cylinder. But if the compression is varying a bit between these two cylinders, then you're going to see a difference in the plug. So if the front one's really low compression, and the s number two is higher compression, you might see a more even burn on the plug collar, or even potentially dark on the front one, darker on the front one than on this uh, number two. But you also want to ensure that you're not leaning it out too much, trying to compensate for low compression or for one cylinder being um, richer than another so that you lean out the other one too much and potentially cause issues such as burning a head gasket or burning a valve. You gotta know that they tend, to, these motors tend to burn a head gasket between two and three, and they tend to burn number three exhaust if they're running too hot. So you gotta account for that. And that's what I'm accounting for because I'm not working on my car. I'm working on cars for other people. And I wanna make sure it's plenty safe and that I can explain to the, to the owner of the car why I can't get it running in any better than it is if the compression numbers aren't good. So we've got key off here, compression gauge in the hole, white and brown wire here, touching to the hot, we can crank it over. We can count the number of times we hear the motor slowing down on the compression stroke. Generally, the needle's gonna stop moving by about numbers, by about six rotations. We'll do this probably seven or eight rotations. Now we got a number of 145, which is actually really good for a rubber bumper car. So now what we'll do is we'll release the pressure, open the throttle, and do it again. And then we'll record the numbers, and we'll do it for all four cylinders, and do the same thing on all three cars. See, we've got about 143, two pounds difference, actually lower with the throttle open. So now I've finished going through the compression both ways. The total compression of the motor and all tests was between 140 and 149, which is pretty good. This thing's probably had to head off and um, skimmed once and put back on. But, the difference between open and closed was very minimal at best. We showed 145 closed, 143 open. 142 closed, 145 open. 149 closed, 149 open. 140 closed, 142 open. That's the kind of variance I've seen in the past. And that doesn't mean anything to me when it comes to tuning two, three pounds. But let's go look at the other cars to see if there's any bigger difference in those. So now we're on to the 74 and a half with the dual SUs. <laughs> wow. 
130. One thirty. Let me finish doing the other three and we'll get back to you. So what I got on this one here is one thirty open, one thirty closed, one thirty eight closed, one thirty eight open, one thirty five closed, one thirty nine open, one thirty three closed, one thirty four open. That's well within what I would call the normal variables of just checking it each individual time because that falls right in line with everything that I checked already on these. Because like this one here was 135 closed, 139 open. Last time I checked it, it was 137, splitting the difference. Now, being with SUs, could it be that the pistons not pulling up, restricting the airflow is the issue? Well, let's go check the one with the Weber on it and find out if it's any different. So on to the 79. Now while I've had the other two running all within the last week or so, this is a complete unknown variable. We don't know what this one's doing at all. Never done anything other than just cranked it over just now. And we're on the jump pack only because it has no other battery. Thirty-nine. Now we're going to open the throttle and we'll choke both. One thirty-nine and one thirty-seven. Let me check the other three, and we'll get back to you. Well, I got the, to the third cylinder. My jump pack was starting to die a little bit, and now I can't get it to do anything, even with the other jump pack, which means we got an electrical problem and can't finish testing this car. But we can bring my car in and check out a higher compression motor. So now we're on to my car. Like I said, this is calculated compression of about 9.6 to 1. Of course, it does have a big cam in it, so a little bit more overlap, so it may not show crazy high compression, or as high as you might think. Um, will a higher compression motor show any more of a difference? Let's find out. One sixty six. Now we're seeing a little bit of a variance. We got one seventy two. See if that continues. So we actually didn't see that much of a difference overall. That first one was the biggest difference we saw. And if I test it again, we'll probably see a different number. And I might go back and test it again just to verify. But what the biggest difference in this one you could see is with the throttle open, you could hear the pistons popping a little bit within the, the slop of the wear of the rods there where you couldn't hear that on anything else. But we ended up 166 closed, 172 open. 168 closed, 167 open, 165 closed, 168 open, and 165 both closed and open. So retesting number one cylinder, I showed 165, 168. So basically what we're getting here is the only difference we're seeing in any of these numbers at all on all the cars 
are well within the variance that you're going to see every time you check it. So throttle open, throttle closed, at least in these motors, doesn't make a darn bit of difference.